Hi, my name's Dave and welcome back to One Acre. This morning we're uh, just outside of Zamora in the Central Valley where the uh, nursery is where we're going to be doing the grafting. You may remember when we took the cuttings off of the uh, vines up in the vineyard in Napa. Of course we took just what's called the scion, but what we have to do is graft those onto a rootstock. I want to keep the rootstocks exactly the same, and this nursery is where I got the rootstock 10114 for the vineyard there in Napa. So uh, what we're going to do today is show where that rootstock come, came from. We'll also talk to a, a friend of mine, you can see him down the row there just a little bit, Frank Lopez, he's an industry leader in uh, grafting and in nurseries, and we'll see where the rootstock is actually grown, and then we'll see how all of that comes together. So let's walk down, we'll have a talk with Frank. Hey Frank, how you doing today? Hey Dave, how you doing? Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to uh, introduce Frank Lopez to everyone. This is uh, Frank, I've known him for probably about 30 years or so. He works here, of course, we mentioned at the Alexander Grapevine Nursery. Frank really is an expert. He's done this work for what, what about 37 years or so, so he right, really, right. really knows what he's talking about. These are the 10114 plants. These are actually the rootstocks for what we're grafting onto, uh, onto the scions. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the rootstocks, Frank, and, and uh, what you're doing right there even. Well, we're making a cutting right here. We usually start with about a 12 inch cutting. In your situation, we chose 10114 because it seemed like the uh, rootstock to use for your area. Uh, since the phylloxera invaded the valleys and all of California, a lot of people have been going to a different rootstock. Yeah. We, the, the old conventional AXR1 was not phylloxera resistant. Yeah, true. So we've gone to the European rootstocks. Uh, 10114 seemed like the one to use for your area, and so that's what we're using. But we have other rootstocks in case other people have other problems, uh, whether we're drought resistance sure. or, or, or magnesium deficiencies or uh, things like that. So, because uh, there's a whole science to rootstocks. Yeah. yeah. So, like where we are in the valley floor, the the soil is very fertile. That 10114 really seems to even throttle back the Cabernet a little bit and keep right. it from being too vigorous. It's not as vigorous as 110R or 1103, yeah. some of the other rootstocks that they have. Uh, so that's the one we chose for you, and it yeah. seems to be working good, I yeah, think. It, it is. It works yeah. great, yeah. Okay. Well, let's go up and have a look at where they're actually doing some of the work and okay. piecing some of the grafting together. Yeah, we'll okay. head up there. Okay. okay. Come on in, Dave. This is where we do all our grafting. Oh, nice. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, got to keep it nice for the workers. What we got over here on this side is, is uh, the rootstock. If you remember, we were making the sure. cuttings out in the field. Yeah, yeah. Now what we do on these is we remove the buds so you don't get any suckers in the field later on. So you, once they're grafted in, then we don't, we don't have any uh, green shoots coming out. It's just all to the scion. Yeah, all yeah. to the scion. Ah. Okay. And then here, this is, uh, these are my, those are my plants. Those yeah. Are my cuttings. Th those are the wow. ones you made right there. Yeah, the 337. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what happens next? So we've got the rootstock and we've got the the, uh, the varietal, so what, what, what's the first part of the process? Well, right now Lalo's cutting these one bud sections and each cane that you made can probably make anywhere from five to ten plants. Ah, okay. We so only need one bud. So as Lalo's cutting these, these are the actual buds that we're going to be using for the grafting. We can see they're all in here, so what, what comes next? How do we get them on the, the rootstocks? Yeah. How do we actually make the graft? Well, we come over here and put them in this this saw right here, which is a uh, saw that was duplicated from one that came from France. There's a lot of different uh, machines that will put the plant together. This is the one that I like that I've been using for many so you've years. Got rootstock right there. This is the bucket. This is the bucket of rootstock. Exactly. So Fourteen, and these are all the. These are all the um, scions, the buds right. that Lala was cutting over there one at a time. Right. This is actually where the graft, the graft yeah. process starts. Yeah, where we put the plants together. Okay. How's, that, how's that work? Okay, well, we turn this on. The rootstock goes on one side. Okay. The budwood on the other side. And they make a corresponding cut. Let me look at those up close. So what we've got is we've actually got notches in there, and those right. notches slide together then. Right, exactly. You want to try and put them together? Yeah. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, so they just slide in together. 
Just like that. Look at that. I'm grafting. How yeah. About that? So that's the that's my new plant. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That is. You did a good wow. job on that too. Yeah. And okay. so that's the batch that they're all working in. I can't take this and plant this in the in the ground. What right. happens next? What's the talk about the callusing aspect of it? That's a very critical part. This has to be. We use peat moss. Everybody else uses. I mean, everybody has their own way of callusing, but you have to keep the entire plant moist until it heals in right here. Ah, and where's where's that taking place? We have bags over here, and what we use we use peat moss. Uh, we found that we that uh, works very well for us. We've probably been using peat moss for uh, I've been using it for over 30 years. And once you get it moist, it stays moist until the plant heals over. So you don't have to add any more water. Other people add water. They use perlite, different things. But this is our technique. So what we're going to do then is take this the the graft itself then gets laid into this plastic bag that's filled with peat moss. Exactly. And that's where the callusing actually takes place. Exactly. And we use a, the, the peat moss that we use is not too wet. We just kind of get a good grip on it and make sure it's not too wet. And we go three weeks. And in three weeks, without even touching these plants, it's like putting them to bed. Wow. And then they, they come Still back with a callus. Bed. Oh, yeah. They have roots. You'll see them through the clear plastic bag here and we know they're ready to go. We check them periodically, but it's about three weeks. Where do we go from here? We're just gonna leave them in bags here, but they need to be warm, don't they? Oh yeah, we have the callusing room. That's our next stage. We take the bags from here, and we put them in our callusing room, which is on, in a different building. Yeah. Uh, we put them on this stand, and we fill up that stand, and then we take, take them, them to the, the callusing room. Can I see the callusing room? Sure. Okay, oh, yeah. sit over there. Okay.